Thursday, July 4th, 2019. The United States is celebrating its Independence Day, and the New York City skies prepare for the colorful blasts of fireworks that await. It's before noon, and the staff at Airway Inn, located by LaGuardia Airport in Queens, New York, alert the authorities about a man who was unresponsive inside one of the hotel rooms. The NYPD arrives to investigate, and at 11.35 a.m., the man is pronounced dead at the scene. The police would check surveillance footage, and in the footage, they would see a woman leaving the premises at 9.34 a.m., but they didn't know who she was, or exactly how she could be connected to the man's death. According to New York City's Office of the Chief Medical Examiner, the death would be caused by an acute intoxication of alcohol, methamphetamine, cocaine, and fentanyl. Fentanyl is a powerful synthetic opioid used medically to treat pain. It is said to be 50 to 100 times the strength of morphine and extremely dangerous, even in the smallest quantities. According to the CDC, the United States saw 36,000 people die in 2019 due to synthetic opioids. These synthetic opioids have found their way into heroin, cocaine, and in some cases, even marijuana. It's an epidemic affecting thousands of American families. And in New York City, something law enforcement was getting uncomfortably used to. Thursday, July 11th, 2019. Police are called to the Crown Motor Inn in Woodside, Queens, just three miles away from the Airway Inn. A man is found dead in one of the rooms. Surveillance footage showed the man entering the premises with an unidentified woman. The death would be the result of fentanyl intoxication, another victim of the ongoing epidemic. He would be identified as 28-year-old John Alessandro Silvero, who supposedly left his girlfriend to meet up with friends and somehow ended up with a woman at the Crown Motor Inn and taking the lethal drugs which resulted in his death. This would be the second fentanyl-related Queens Motel death in the last week. New York City didn't know it yet, but they were on their way to almost 1,500 overdose deaths for 2019. As for law enforcement, well... This wouldn't be the last CD Queens Motel they would have to visit during the summer of 2019. Monday, August 19th, 2019. Cipriani Dolce Restaurant, Grand Central Terminal, New York City, New York. Cipriani is a hospitality brand which dates back to Italy in the 1930s. They have a global presence with locations in places like London, Miami, Hong Kong, Ibiza, amongst other popular tourist destinations. The afternoon approaches as Cipriani Dolce, the Grand Central Terminal location, which opened in New York City in 2002, and has since become a renowned Manhattan eatery. Italian-born head chef, Andrea Zamperoni, has not showed up for a shift. The 33-year-old chef, had been employed by Cipriani Brand for 10 years, and he would soon be reported missing. According to his roommates, he was last seen on Saturday, August 17th, when he returned home to Queens after his shift in Manhattan. What exactly happened to the well-respected chef? It certainly wasn't like him to not show up for work and not return phone calls from those perplexed by his absence. Soon, the NYPD would start investigating in order to get to the bottom of this mystery. Camera footage will lead authorities to the Camway Motor Lodge in Elmhurst, Queens, just a few blocks from Chef Andrea Zamperoni's residence. They would arrive at the motel at 8.30 p.m. on Wednesday, August 21st, two days after Zamperoni was reported missing. They would make their way to room 15 and knock on the door. A woman opens the door and quickly shuts it at the sight of the officers. They hear a lot of moving around going on the side of the room, and soon the woman returns to open the door. 
The officers are overcome with the smell of what they refer to as a dead body and burning incense. The woman states, I didn't do it. My pimp made me do it. It wasn't me. The officers inspect the room, and in one corner, they find a garbage can filled with bed linens with a human foot protruding through the linens. They would also find cell phones, a glass pipe used for smoking drugs, and an American Express credit card, embossed with the name Andrea Zamperoni. The woman would be identified as 41-year-old Angela Barini. She would be taken into custody for questioning in connection to the death of 33-year-old Andrea Zamperoni. Further investigation into the surveillance footage at Camway Lodge would show Andrea Zamperoni entering the motel with Angela Barini at 4.38 a.m. August 18th. At 1.30 p.m. that same day, Barini would be seen leaving the motel room and retrieving a garbage can. From the dates of August 18th to August 21st, other individuals were seen entering and leaving the room. However, Andrea Zamperoni was not seen leaving the premises after entering the room with Barini on the 18th. Toxicology reports would show that Andrea Zamperoni had alcohol, cocaine, and GHB in his system. GHB, or gamma-hydroxybutyrate, is a central nervous system depressant, which is extremely powerful in small doses. It's commonly referred to as the date rape drug because it has been used by many to incapacitate people in order to take advantage of them. It's also been referred to as a nightclub or partying drug. Angela Barini would be interviewed at the police station. She would tell authorities that she was working as a prostitute and that Zamperoni paid her money in exchange for sex. She stated that she would sometimes give her customers drugs as she was a drug addict herself. According to Barini, the drugs were supplied by her pimp boyfriend who forbid her from calling the police after she found Zamperoni dead in the room. She also mentioned in their discussion about whether to dismember the body in order to get rid of it. Law enforcement would soon connect Angela Barini to the death at the Airway Inn on July 4th and the death of John Alessandro Silvero at the Crown Motor Inn on July 11th. In both instances, law enforcement was able to positively identify that the woman in the surveillance footage from the motels was Angela Barini. On Monday, August 22nd, Barini would stand before a judge. At that point, her charges were possession and conspiracy to distribute substances containing fentanyl. The story would make big news. The world would find out what exactly happened to esteemed chef Andrea Zamperoni, a man who made a name for himself as the head of one of Manhattan's renowned Italian eateries. The chef, who co-workers said had not missed a day of work in 10 years, lost his life after a fatal encounter with a drug-addicted prostitute who in the span of just under two months left a trail of death behind her. Angela Barini would plead not guilty and be held in custody awaiting trial. Thursday, October 10th, 2019. Angela Barini is back in court. Law enforcement have charged her with distributing and possessing with intent to distribute fentanyl, methamphetamine, and cocaine that resulted in another deadly overdose. Angela Barini would be linked to a fourth death. According to law enforcement, on August 4th, 2019, Barini was in College Point, Queens, where she met with an unnamed man described as a 60-year-old retired postal worker. The man would be found dead in his College Point apartment after taking a lethal dose of fentanyl. Law enforcement continued to investigate Angela Barini's life. There were still some loose ends to tie up. Where was she getting the drugs? Who was seen around the Camway Motel with her where Andrea Zamperoni died? Who exactly was her pimp boyfriend that she was apparently taking directions from? Monday, February 8th, 
2021. It had been over a year and a half since the deaths of four men occurred, which law enforcement have tied to Angela Barini. 44-year-old Leslie Liscano is arrested. Through law enforcement's investigation into Angela Barini's contacts, including messages sent through Facebook, they were able to conclude that Leslie Liscano was the man who served as Barini's pimp boyfriend and sometime drug supplier. He is brought in on charges of conspiring to distribute controlled substances. Court documents would soon reveal the full extent of Liscano's involvement in the Camway Motel incident, where he played a role before and after the death of 33-year-old chef Andrea Zamperoni. According to law enforcement, Leslie Liscano was the one who reserved the room at the Camway Motel on or about August 16th. Further details would be uncovered when authorities gained access to Angela Barini's Facebook Messenger account. The account would show correspondence between Angela Barini and Leslie Liscano, who used the name Ken Ween on his account. It would start on August 16th of 2019. At 2.47 p.m., Barini messages Leslie Liscano on Facebook. I got a business opportunity for you. I'll cut to the chase. Then I'm willing to pay for your services. Liscano responds, Okay. Barini then asks, Are you with it? And Liscano responds, Yes, my queen. After discussing the logistics of the meeting with each other, Barini states, I got gold, electronics, weed, tea, and G for sale. Liscano responds, You want to come with me? You could stay in my room in Midland. Barini then states, I mean, I got a zip of the letter G and weed I'm holding right now, so, uh, yeah, I need to get money until I pawn some jewelry. Barini would later add that she robbed a drug dealer in Manhattan, and she was in big shit for it. She would tell Liscano to come and get her, and please don't tell anybody, because she was trusting him. Leslie Liscano would arrive at the Camway Lodge on the 16th of August, 2019, after hearing about Angela Barini's possession of drugs, including marijuana, T, and G. T, or Tina, is code word for methamphetamine. G is code word for GBL, which is gamma butrolactone, or GHB, which as we discussed, is gamma hydroxybutyrate, both used as date rape drugs. Two days later, on August 18th, 2019, at approximately 4.47 a.m., Barini sends a Facebook message to Leslie Liscano, directing him to go into the bathroom now. At 4.54 a.m., video surveillance cameras at Camway Lodge captures Barini and Andrea Zamperoni sitting on a bench outside together at the motel. At approximately 4.58 a.m., Barini and Andrea Zamperoni enter the premises. Law enforcement believe that when Barini directed Leslie Liscano to go into the bathroom, she did so because she would be arriving shortly and entering the premises, and she did not want to see the victim, 33-year-old chef Andrea Zamperoni, to see Liscano. They believe that Liscano and Barini did this in furtherance of their plan to rob Andrea Zamperoni after he entered the premises and had been rendered unconscious by the drugs that Barini had given him. Liscano would be seen leaving the Camway Lodge at 5.15 a.m. after Zamperoni had already been drugged and unconscious. Barini and Leslie Liscano continued to communicate on Facebook Messenger after Liscano left the lodge. At 5.20 a.m., Barini told Liscano, Please hurry, we don't have much time. Liscano responded, I'm walking to the pharmacy to buy gift cards. At approximately 5.22 a.m., Barini requested Liscano to make some purchases, which included shampoo, conditioner, body wash, and food. At approximately 6 a.m., a bank card belonging to Andrea Zamperoni was used as a Rite Aid pharmacy in Queens, New York. Video surveillance recovered from the location captured Liscano using the card at the Rite Aid pharmacy. At approximately 6.06 a.m., Liscano messages Barini, what else you want me to buy? Barini responds, 
milk, cereal, raisin bran, cold cuts, cheddar cheese, cigarettes, mayonnaise, and turkey. At 6.17 a.m., Lascano messages Barini, I'm here at the deli. And at 6.19 a.m., Zamperoni's bank card was used as a deli located on the same block as the Camway Lodge. By 6.27 a.m., Lascano arrives back at the Camway and messages Barini in order to tell her that the items purchased, as well as Andrea Zamperoni's bank card, were outside her room and inside a plastic bag. At 6.32 a.m., video surveillance captures Lascano leaving the Camway Lodge, and shortly after, Angela Barini exits her room to retrieve the items. Later that day, at approximately 7.45 a.m., Barini would message Leslie Lascano again, demanding in some and substance, and in part, that he return to the Camway Lodge with blankets and sheets. Later that same day at 1.30 p.m., video surveillance would capture Barini exiting the motel, going into an alleyway, and retrieving a garbage can, and re-entering the premises. On or about August 19, 2019, at 12.20 a.m., Lascano calls Barini on Facebook Messenger. After that, Barini would message multiple individuals to inquire whether they had access to a hand truck. At 2.46 a.m., Lascano would message Barini, Do you still need the hand truck? Between August 18 and August 21, 2019, Video surveillance captured multiple people entering the premises and exiting. However, as we mentioned earlier, Zamperoni was never seen leaving the premises after the night of the 18th. Investigators believe that Zamperoni had died on August 18th, 2019, and that Barini asked Lascano to return to the Camway Lodge to assist her in hiding the victim's body. On August 22nd, 2019, after police had arrived at the motel, they would seize multiple items after getting a search warrant. They would find glass containing a purple liquid with powder at the top, glass pipes commonly used for smoking narcotics, bottles of bleach and bleach-covered towels, electronics, a saw, and an empty suitcase. They did not find Andrea Zamperoni's cell phone. The liquid seized would be identified as GBL, commonly used as a date rape drug. During the police interview of Leslie Lascano, he would admit that he paid cash for the motel room that Barini occupied, and that Barini wanted the room to engage in prostitution. He would also admit to hiding in the bathroom when Barini and Andrea Zamperoni entered the room. Lascano further stated, in sum and substance and in part, that the victim passed out quickly after entering the room, and that when Lascano came out of the bathroom, the victim was sleeping on the floor. Lascano would go on to further say that Barini gave the victim something to drink that would make him fall asleep, because Barini had in fact done that to other men. Furthermore, Lascano explained that, prior to the events that occurred at the Camway Lodge, he had heard that Barini had previously given men narcotics without their knowledge, in order to cause them to fall asleep so that she could rob them, and that Barini did this for a living. Lascano further added that prior to the events at the Camway Lodge, he heard of another man that died because Barini gave him fake cocaine. With regard to the victim, Lascano added that when Barini told him to go to the bathroom at the Camway Lodge, he believed that Barini was going to give the victim something to drink to make him fall asleep. Lascano asserted in some and substance and in part that Barini told him that she uses liquid G to make men fall asleep. Lascano would admit that Barini provided him with the victim's bank card when he came out of the bathroom and that he used the victim's card at a couple of stores in Queens. However, a month after Lascano's arrest, police would tell the press that Leslie Lascano not only used 33-year-old chef Andrea Zamperoni's stolen credit card at a Rite Aid pharmacy, and a deli, but apparently also visited a local casino and attempted to withdraw cash using the stolen credit card. In August of 2021, Angel Barini pleaded guilty to two counts of distributing narcotics that caused the deaths of a person, one count of distributing fentanyl, methamphetamine, 
and cocaine, and one count of conspiring to distribute gamma butrolactone, also known as GBL. On April 26, 2022, Angela Barini will be sentenced to 30 years in prison for distributing narcotics that cause multiple fatal overdoses. Breon Peace, United States Attorney for the Eastern District of New York, would state, The defendant drugged and killed multiple people for a quick dollar. She stole their personal belongings while they lay unconscious, dying from the lethal drug she gave them. The defendant's substantial prison sentence is warranted by her shocking disregard for human life. Hopefully today's sentence will bring some solace to the victim's families and serve as a warning to future perpetrators that there are significant consequences to these horrific crimes. Homeland Security Investigations Acting Special Agent in Charge Ricky Patel would state, Displaying complete disregard for human life, Barini peddled fentanyl-laced drugs to her victims who tragically lost their lives to temporary highs. The plague of addiction continues to devastate families and communities in New York and around the country. This case is a painful reminder that there are people like Barini who prey on addicts, turning deadly fentanyl cocktails into quick profits. Homeland Security Investigations, along with our law enforcement partners, remain committed to investigating and dismantling networks that perpetrate opioid-related overdose deaths. Today's sentencing holds one more dealer responsible for profiting off the addiction of others, several of whom paid the ultimate price. Barini's older sister, who identified herself as Sally, would speak to the New York Post about the sentence, which she believed was too harsh. She would say, quote, I think that wasn't taken into account was that of course what happened was wrong. But the victims put themselves there. They weren't saints. They went with her. They wanted a party, and they wanted to do drugs with her and have sex. It wasn't like she put a gun to somebody's head and forced them to go with her. Barini's sister Sally would further state, This is a federal case, yet the government can sit there when they are letting hundreds of thousands of illegal aliens come across the border with fentanyl every day. Hundreds of thousands of people are dying from this, and they sit there and act like they have no part in this. End quote. Well, I suppose that's one way to look at it. Although I'm not sure the victim's families are happy to hear what Sally has to say about the crimes her sister committed, which contributed to the deaths of four individuals. In my opinion, whether the men went there to have sex with Barini, do drugs, or whatever the case may be, it's quite clear that Angela Barini knew what she was doing and knew that the cocktails could potentially cause death to the men that she was meeting at these motels. It was a chance that she was willing to take and a chance that landed her 30 years in the slammer. As for Leslie Lascano, He's still awaiting sentencing and knowingly, intentionally, and unlawfully conspiring to distribute and possess with the intent to distribute a controlled substance in connection to the death of 33-year-old chef Andrea Zamperoni at the Camway Lodge in Elmhurst, Queens. Before we go, I just want to mention that if anyone out there listening to this is suffering from drug addiction... Well, I hope this is a cautionary tale for you. As we know from this story and the hundreds and thousands of stories circulating in the news the past few years, much of the drugs being sold on the streets aren't always what you think they are. Don't become a statistic. Get help. Because out there, whether you know it or not, there's someone out there that loves you and cares for you, and wants to see you do better. With that, we come to an end.